to be able to worship the Lord again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God that we have breath in our body. We have movement in our limbs, articulation in our voice. We greet you in the name of Jesus. Hey, Terry Jeep girl, God bless you in Colorado. Sorry I couldn't get uh, back to you later this week like I wanted to do. And uh, But we want you to just come on and say hello to us, Terry. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you as well. Praise God. Every time I hear of somebody going to Colorado, I want to try to plug them into you. So you might be getting phone calls from strange people. That's because we got a friend we have a friend in Colorado, Terry Chiquito, and uh, she loves the Lord. And so uh, don't mind if you get a couple extra calls. Okay, Terry? Okay. God bless you. Praise God. Hey, Jackie Fisher in Kentucky. Jackie Fisher, way out there in Kentucky. God bless you. Come on and say hello to us. Uh, good morning, Pastor. How are you? Fine. Praise the Lord. Good morning to you and Russell and Mark and your family. Hallelujah. Say hello to Jackie for me. I sure will. I sure will. You know, Jackie uh, Jackie has been attending Shy Temple Church in Atlanta for over 30 years. And uh, I don't know what they would do without her, but God is continuing to use her there. And so we have this agreement. You know, she goes there. And whenever I go, when I can, I go to help them out and encourage them. But um, we... The online church, we encourage you to work in your local church. Uh, what you're getting on the online church, Jackie, you can go and help the online church. So we greet the Fisher family in Kentucky. Jackie, you have a great day. You as well, Pastor. Ryan, my friend Ryan in Pennsylvania. Ryan and our family. God bless you, Ryan. Uh, good morning again, Pastor, and God bless you and Miss Jackie as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much, and uh, give our love to uh, Miss Tara and Miss Jenna, and in a few minutes, we're going to ask you to come on and lead us in prayer, Ryan, okay? All right, sir, I'll be okay, ready. Okay, good, 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 good. Karen Herzog in Pennsylvania, up there around Harrisburg, in that area. Hi, Karen, come on and say hello to us. Good morning, Pastor Carter. I didn't make it to my local church today because I have an upper respiratory infection and didn't want to infect anybody at church. But I said, the devil's not going to hold me down. I can go to Dr. Carter's online church. Praise God. <laughs> hey, Karen, first... that's why we're here. That's why we're here, that's Karen. Right. <laughs> Praise I God. I love it. Hallelujah. We're here, we're here, Karen, not to compete with any local church. We are here because the Lord has raised up this ministry to stand in the gap for this nation, and even we're, we're worldwide, and we're standing in the gap, and we're here for anyone who cannot make it to church, church to their local church, anyone who's sick and afflicted, shut-ins, I mean, and all the people have to do is pick up their phone and dial a set of numbers or get on the Internet, and they are in church. Hey, Karen, so thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Praise God, and we believe God to deliver you from that sinus infection. Uh, looks like you and Dustina are going through the same, same kind of attack. God's going to give you healing, Karen. Keep on trusting in the Lord, all righty? Amen, Pastor. Praise God, praise God. And and I want all of you to tell other people about the online church. I know, I know, we got it. We have a good thing here. It's a good thing here. Amen. God has given us the word, but we want more people to get in on what the Lord is doing. Praise God. And um, I shared with Pastor Paul Bakley the other day. I said, Pastor Paul, now you and I, we've been in discussions about where should people go next after they get saved. And uh, because a lot of people claim Jesus as their Savior and don't know where to go, don't know what to do, and a lot of them just fall off off the edge and uh, because they don't get a firm foundation. I said, now, this we need to develop something. And this online church, praise God, the teachings that God has given us, Karen, in this online church will help anybody to be able to stand. And so if you know 
uh, Christians who need building up in the Word of God, uh, have them have them join us so we can help them to build a firm foundation. These are the last days, and people need a firm foundation. Karen, I don't think people realize how close it is to the end. What do you think about that, Karen? Yeah, I, I, I believe you're right, Pastor Carter. You know, they really don't. Um, they just kind of gloss over the end times in, in some of the some of the brick and mortar churches, so they really do need to know. And this is also very good, and I catch a lot of your services on archive because I'm usually in church at this time, but not not today, so I got to come live. So but I do I do, do catch your services archived. Praise God. Praise God. Karen is one of our students in the Paul Baker School of Prophecy, as well as so many others. Terry is, and Jackie Fisher, Ryan Trogler, and uh, uh, Zisla, she's going to come on in a moment, and Dustina, and so many others. And um, the Holy Spirit is just blessing my heart, ladies and gentlemen, because what you're getting, you can teach others. You can teach others how to be strong, how to stand in these last and evil days. So we thank God for you. We praise God. We, we encourage you to work in your local church and be a blessing there. But we also love it when you can come on and help us to encourage others in the Lord. So, Karen, uh, God bless you. Hope you all aren't getting any more snow for a little while. You and Ryan are in the almost the same vicinity. So I hope you're not getting a whole lot more snow. Uh, and, Karen, this would be a good day for you to rest. You were working hard on your job and working in your studies. So enjoy this day, Karen. God bless you. God bless you, too, Pastor Carter. Praise God. Praise God. Let's go down into Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going down into Texas to a place called Midlothian. Midlothian, come on, Zisla, and say hello to us. Hello. Good morning, Pastor Carter. Praise and, the and Lord. And blessings to you and, and Miss Jackie. And your, and your son, we praise you, and we thank you so much for all the work you do and uh, helping bring us together, bring us towards Jesus. And uh, and I wanted to say thank you also for the class uh, from the Pastor Paul Bigley Prophecy Classes, the Council of God, um, or the counseling, you know, from God. So we're receiving, you know, that we're, le- we're learning how to get more counseling from him with uh, the teachings from uh, Dr. Mark Vergler. And uh, it's so nice, you know, the, the book is such a good read. And uh, and then he, you have the CDs, you know, where we listen to him and explain each chapter. So it's just such a good class. So I want to thank you so much for, for teaching that us that class every week. Praise God. Praise God. And we thank God so much for you, Zisla, for your husband and family. And Zisla is one of our outstanding students. And uh, what a blessing Zisla is, not only to us here, but to the her, people surrounding her, people on her job, and uh, 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 people even in other countries where she prays for them and, and communicates with them and, and lets them know that the Lord is on their side. So, Zizla, we give our kudos out to you and your family. You continue to be strong in the Lord and to trust the Lord with all your heart. Praise God. We love you, and we uh, thank God thank you, for you. God. All right. Praise thank God. You, praise God. Dustina. Dustina, what's this I hear? The, uh, uh, Satan trying to put more sickness on your household. Come on, Dustina. We rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Come and speak to us, Dustina. Okay, so she's speaker's not working on her laptop, but she says she's praying for everybody who is sick, who is sick and for their needs. Thank you, Dustina. And um, we've got people praying for you, Dustina. Um, and so she's talking about making the meal today. And if she can stand up long enough without being dizzy, if not, then they'll eat chunky chicken in a can. Well, chunky chicken is uh, pretty good in a can if you mix it with something else. But uh, we believe God to help you and your family. And um, believe God and to bless you and Michael and Destiny and Nathan. And, and in the name of Jesus, we bind that spirit of infirmity and sickness that has come against the Branham household. We bind that spirit of infirmity that has come against uh, 
Karen Herzog and her household. And we bind any demon of infirmity that has been assigned against any of us. In the name of Jesus, we command healing in Jesus' name. And Father God, we bless you. We praise you. Lord, touch dusty in the nail. Take away that dizziness, that ache, the fever, anything negative that is coming against her and her family. And Lord, bring the healing. We loose the spirit of healing. We, rele we loose the spirit of healing in the name of Jesus throughout these households. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Praise God. Ryan says he's in agreement. Terry's in agreement. You know, whenever two or more agree in the name of Jesus as touching upon anything you pray about, anything you ask about it, the Lord will do it. So stand in agreement and learn how to wait on the Lord. Wait on him. He may not... <coughs> answer right away but he is going to answer and so we thank God we praise God we thank God for what he's doing this ministry is mighty this ministry uh, we record each each message and the messages go worldwide and so when you cannot come on live with us we extend the invitation go to our YouTube channel Go to the YouTube channel and get the messages on YouTube. The anointing is on the message. Whether you're live or whether you're listening on YouTube or you're getting it uh, from my Dropbox, the anointing. The anointing destroys the yoke. God's presence, that's the Holy Spirit, that's the anointing. And so these messages will live long, long after I'm gone, and, uh, and, and as you develop your messages and, and, and put them on YouTube, it's the Word of God. See, God's Word can never die. God's Word can never return to heaven empty or void. Once you put that Word out there, and we're talking about the Word of God, not your own thoughts, not uh, uh, Grandma's recipe, not uh, uh, Daddy's take on stuff, but the word of God, what God is saying, once that word goes out there, it cannot return unto heaven empty. It is impossible, ladies and gentlemen, for God's word to return to him void or empty. How do I know? Because the Bible says so. God says his word will not return unto him void or empty. So keep on preaching the word. When people call you for advice or counsel, Get the word of God for them. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the scripture to give to them. Give them that word. Encourage them to meditate on the word of God. Well, what do you mean, Pastor Carter, by meditate? Meditate means you memorize it, you speak it to God, you sing it to God, you talk it to God, you let those word, that word that you've hidden in your heart cross your lips. You hear the word cross your lips when you speak the word of God that you've hidden in your heart, that you've memorized, or that you're reading. When you hear the word of God cross your lips, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? The moment the word of God crosses your lips, exits through your mouth, the Holy Spirit takes over. Ladies and gentlemen, this is amazing how God has set up the kingdom, how he's how he uses his power. The moment the word of God crosses your lips, Ryan, the Holy Spirit takes that word and he creates. He's still creating. He will always be creating. In the beginning, God, God spoke a word. He said, let there be light. And the Holy Spirit took those words and created light. And light, boom came on the scene just like that. It doesn't take God years to build anything or create, it, create anything. That's why we blow the theory of evolution out the window. God spoke. The Holy Ghost created. Jesus was a co-creator. And things happen. And so when you have sickness, Dustina, you speak the word of God. It is written, with his stripes I am healed. The moment you speak those words, Dustina, the, the Holy Ghost takes over. 
the Holy Spirit. Hey, Nathan, tell your mom. The Holy Ghost takes over, mom, the moment you speak those words. And even if you don't see results right away, you wait on the Lord. Because the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So we want to thank God for what he's doing. And I, I praise God for each and every one of you. My heart leaps uh, I'm, I'm like the poet Browning or Wordsworth or somebody. My heart leaps when I behold, the poet wrote 300 years ago, when I behold, when I come online and I see you there ready to worship God, my heart leaps out when I behold your love for the Lord and when I see the Holy Spirit just hovering, ready to bless somebody, ready to heal somebody, ready to deliver somebody. So tell your friends, tell your friends, hey, hey, uh, come on to the, the online church and get some teachings, some powerful teachings, or uh, go to YouTube and, 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 and listen to the, this word. God has given a word that is liberating people, setting them free. And by the way, remind them, oh, no, we're not trying to compete with the church. We are part of the church. We just minister through a different medium. And the medium that we use is the online uh, provision, the cell phone, uh, the, the computer, the Internet. We reach people in ways that the Brick and mortar church cannot reach people. And guess what? We give all the glory and the honor to God. So, Dustina, don't get weary in well-doing. Karen, don't get weary in well-doing. Ryan, Jackie Fisher, Jeep, Wes, all of you. Uh, and, and those names I have not yet called out, don't become weary in well-doing. You are about a great work. Don't let anybody tell you that you're wasting your time because what you're doing is going to have everlasting effects in people's lives because you're serving the living God. God is awesome. We worship you, Lord God. We worship you. We call you Jehovah Jireh, our provider. What a wonderful provider you are, God. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who gives us the victory, the Lord our banner. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. There'd be no peace without you, Lord. Jehovah Sid Kenu, the Lord, our righteousness. You said we are the righteousness of God. So we just praise you, Lord, and we bless you. Well, bless God. Praise God. Oh, we had a great time last Sunday. We had a great time last Sunday. Praise God. As we were blessed, we were fed uh, by the Holy Ghost through David Carter, I see David is on from Dubai, and we want David to come on and say hello to us, and then we're going to get ready for our message for today. David, come on and say hello to us, would you please? Hello, Pastor Carter. Hey, David Carter in Dubai. Hey, how are you doing, sir? Blessed, blessed. How's Miss Nayoka doing? She's doing wonderful. Um, her and the daughter's doing great. Praise um, she's God. She's actually working on some, um, right now she's commonly working on some school work for tomorrow, but she's doing awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. It's so yeah. good to hear a man yeah. say his wife is doing awesome. Man, that is so good. That is so good. We ble we were yeah. blessed by the word last week. Oh, uh, I just I just praise God for the word, Pastor, and I just thank God for you and your family. And uh, this is an online church. Um, it's just a blessing and honor to, to, to teach the Word of God, but it's just a blessing and honor to be online and to be just fed the Word of God uh, week in and week out. So I'm, I'm truly ble just blessed by being a part of this ministry. Praise God. Well, you are. Yeah, you, I, are you are a vital part of this ministry, and we'll be hearing from you again soon. Uh, Jackie said, get his picture, get his photo. People don't want to see you when David Carter's preaching, so we got to get. I, I'm gonna get a photo of all of you guys eventually, so that people can see you and not me when you're preaching. Okay? Yes, yeah, that sounds great, sir. Yes, sir. All right. The Lord bless you, David, and and praise yeah. God. Tell others. Tell others. Tell 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 people in the Dubai community how they can reach this ministry. We want to be a blessing. My heart's desire 
God told me, don't count numbers. Don't do the head count when you come online. But, but God knows in my heart I want to reach uh, many people for him in these last and, and wicked days so that all can have the opportunity to get saved. So help us, David, to tell others about the Lord Jesus. And you keep on preaching. You keep on ministering. You keep on standing in the gap in Dubai. And we love you and thank God for you. Amen. We love you, too, and, and we definitely will uh, uh, um, get the information out here in Dubai. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I see Mr. Anonymous. There's a guy on here named Anonymous. Uh, he might be anonymous to you, but that's my son, Wes. Hey, Wes, come on and say hello to us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, and uh, God bless everyone. Just happy to be able to be here, even if uh, we're here a little late today, and praising the Lord for a new day and a new opportunity to uh, worship Him with you all. Praise God. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Wes. Wes is a, a school teacher in Chester, Pennsylvania, and uh, getting ready. He's been teaching there for 25 years, getting ready to transfer to a new school district. And we thank God for Wes. Uh, he's he's my, my son. I love him very much. He's always been a blessing to his dad and continues to be a blessing. I give a shout-out to his lovely wife, my daughter-in-law, Marisol, and granddaughters, uh, Aaliyah and Mariles. And may God continue to bless you in your household. Keep on trusting in the Lord with all your heart. It, my heart leaps out when I see you online. Uh, and he says, it's easier for him to come on using the word anonymous. So when you say anonymous, that is Wes, the man Carter. Praise God. Bless you, Wes. Okay, David. Uh, David, I'm, I'm kind of, I've been preaching all along, but I've got a word from the Lord for everybody. I, I believe this word is going to bless people. And what we're doing, um, Ryan, all this year, we're teaching foundational truths. In other words, we're answering the question that I posed uh, to Pastor Paul Begley, and he and I have been talking about this. Where do you go from here? From the moment you get saved, where do you go from here? And a lot of people don't know where to go. A lot of people are, are not getting foundational teachings in their churches, and a lot of people are not attending church. So I'm volunteering. I'm volunteering Back to Basics Ministries, ladies and gentlemen. I'm volunteering Back to Basics Ministries to answer that question, where do I go from here? And if you know anyone who's just got saved or people who are not t learning in their churches or uh, Christians who need foundational truths, tell them, show them how to get to this, this hookup so that we can teach you the foundational truths. We're teaching biblical truths, and, and we're, we're visualizing um, the man who built his house on sand and the man who built his house on stone. And so we're going to be teaching people how to build your lives on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. So show people how to get here on Sunday mornings. Okay, Ryan, would you pray, Ryan? Uh, yes, sir. Hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, I know where I'm going, but, you know, as long as, as long as Jesus is walking with me side by side, hand in hand, I know where I'm going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another day. We want to thank you for breathing the breath of life into us again today. We also want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins. And, Lord, we want you to come down and uh, bless Pastor Carter with your awesome word today to teach us your awesome word today. And we also want you to come down and heal the sick. You know, let, let them be healed in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, I'm going to pray for the homeless. I'm going to pray for that they stay warm and, and have uh, meals in them and just bless, protect them. <clears throat> and, Lord, we just we just want to want your love every day and every second of the day. And, Lord, we just want to say thank you. We love you, praise you, and honor you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Praise God, and we bless, we bless Ryan and his family, and we bless all of you in the name of Jesus. Today I want to talk about, um, briefly in the few minutes that are left in, in our service today, and um, 
you might want to go to YouTube, my YouTube channel, Leroy Carter YouTube, and um, see the the um, video. And in fact, you can go back and and look at review the videos we've uh, developed for the past year, and 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 they're all foundational. They're building. They're strengthening the body of Christ. Today, I want to talk about. Proof of fellow, proof of discipleship, or make full proof proof of your discipleship. Um, there are a lot of people out there saying I'm saved. People are saying they're saved. I hear a lot of people talking about how who else is saved. They they give you a list of people who they say are saved. I, uh, there are some certain government government officials, and there are people who uh, come on Facebook and will will will, will Bet their last dollar that so-and-so is saved because so-and-so has a high government ranking. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm scared of that. I am afraid of that. I'm, I don't accept every, everybody who says they're saved. The Bible gives us a proof for this. The Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. And, and, and Satan is so deceptive. Uh, he is so deceptive. There are churches where people c claim they're saved, and 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 listen, the the pastor is a man, and the first lady is a man. Come on now, come on, what's with that? There are churches where the pastor is a woman, and the first lady is a woman. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got some goofed up churches, and 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 they claim they love Jesus, but ladies and gentlemen, our God is. Uh, Jehovah Sid Canu. He's known as the God our righteousness. He desires righteousness and holiness. And and I don't think God is gonna gonna uh take stand too too much longer uh the hypocrisy and the flaunting of homosexuality and lesbianism in his face or the lying and the deception and delusion. I mean, this nation is so full of lies and deception and delusion that, that people are being tricked up every day. Even you and I, we don't even know when we turn on the news, whether it's fake news or it's real news. That is why I urge you, I beg you, ladies and gentlemen, to draw nigh unto God. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Here's what gets me. I mean, this gets me. It just rips my guts apart. Uh, we've got so many proud spirits. There are so many people in the church, and I put quotations around the church, the church, unquote, quote, unquote, who, who claim Jesus as their Savior, and then they go about doing anything they want to do, say anything they want to do, and, and people are elevated to promoted to high office, high rank in the church, and they are destroying people's uh, uh, lives. They're destroying people's uh, faith in God, but yet they continue to rule in these positions. We've got pastors who are, many who are so arrogant, you can't teach them anything. I was going to say doodly squat. You can't teach them anything. We've got bishops. I mean, I was talking to someone yesterday about certain bishops who hate my guts because I, I challenge, if you have the office of bishop, I want to see some bishop fruit in your life. If you have the office of apostle, I want to see some apostolic fruit in your life. If you have the office of pastor, I want to see some pastoral fruits in your life. The same with teacher. The same with evangelist. If you're an evangelist, there ought to be some fruits in your life. We ought not have to deal with people who are arrogant, people who act ugly, people who say anything, and here's the thing, I mean, this thing has been churning up in me for months now, and I've been asking God, God, why are pastors afraid to preach against racism? Why? And then uh, I asked Pastor Paul, Bailey, Pastor Paul, why are white preachers afraid to preach against racism? Why are they afraid? Uh, uh, and Pastor Paul said, they're not going to preach it. They're not going to preach it. That's what Paul told me. They're not going to preach it. I said, why? Paul didn't give me an answer. I said, why are they afraid to preach against racism? But God has given me the answer. There are pastors who are afraid of their congregations. They're afraid to lose their following. They're afraid to lose that, that, that backing, those likes, the, that, the financial backing. There are people who, who are afraid to lose their fellowship. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I do not want, hey, Ryan, I don't want to be the kind of preacher standing before God, and God will ask me, why didn't you preach against homosexuality? Why didn't you preach against lesbianism? Why didn't you preach against racism? And, and, uh, and, 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 and uh, be, to make a weak excuse to God, like, but God, I preached about, about love. I preach about Jesus on the cross. I preach about love your neighbor. And God is going to hold people accountable, ladies and gentlemen. God is going to hold people accountable. I mean, and, and that, that whole racism thing. I mean, I'm no, I know many black preachers. They have hatred in them towards whites. That is a sin, ladies and gentlemen. I know many white preachers have sin in them against, against uh, blacks, against Hispanics, against people from other nations. And they call themselves Christians. How can you call yourself a Christian? I know I might be stepping on somebody's toes, but I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to step on them. Uh, you can just flip to another channel if you want to. But I am, uh, my guts are being torn apart because I see pastors who are afraid to preach the truth. And if you're only preaching the half of a, half of the truth, you're preaching lies. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says if a man says he loves God whom he cannot see and hates his neighbor who he can see, he is a liar. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot of pastors out there. They are liars. They are liars. They are liars. Yes, and I will stand in the bishop's face and call the bishop a liar. I'll stand in the pope's face and call him a liar. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you like it is. If you are afraid, if you're a punk, if you're a wimp, and you can't preach against racism, I don't care if you're white, black, blue, green, or purple, if you can't preach that racism is a sin and you're afraid to preach that and the Holy Ghost has moved on your heart to preach that, but you're afraid to preach that, then how, how how, how can you stand in your office? How can you stand in your office? And the thing that gets me is congregations believe everything that comes out of their pastor's mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, I've told you again and again, and I will tell you again and again, you test the Spirit by the Spirit. My son Wes has heard me uh, preach this for years. If, uh, uh, don't just take what I say. You test it with the Scripture. If what I'm preaching is not in the Scripture, then I'm a liar, and you don't have any responsibility to follow what I'm teaching. But you have the responsibility to check whatever comes out of your pastor's mouth against the Word of God. You have the, you have the responsibility to test your teacher, whatever comes out of his or her mouth, if, if it's not in line with the scripture, it's a lie. But I'm, I'm, I'm disturbed. My heart is disturbed. And Lord God, I'm asking you to help me with this because it's troubling my soul. It's troubling my soul. The number of preachers in this nation who are afraid to preach the truth that racism is a sin. Ladies and gentlemen, there should not be the, these uh, drive-bys, these 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 modern-day lynchings and, and, and this finger-pointing and this blaming and, and this hatred of because somebody's skin is a different color or they're from a different ethnicity. And the church has the responsibility to preach against it and to stand against it. Ladies and gentlemen, we ought not, not to be any part of this. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, 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 a lot of the KKK members are in the church you got them in the church. Black Panthers in the church. Black racists in the church. They're in the church hiding behind uh, uh, collars, clerical collars, hiding behind choir robes, hiding behind the office of the deacon, the trustee, the steward, the, the bishop, ladies and gentlemen. But God is going to expose because the scripture says judgment must first begin in the church. Now, I don't know. It, it, it really doesn't matter to me whether you like what I'm saying or not, but what I'm preaching is the truth. God hates hatred. God hates sin. And anyone who calls themselves a follower of Jesus Christ and is practicing hatred and sin needs to go back and get saved. I mean, really get saved. How can you say you're saved if you've got hatred in your heart? How can you be saved? How can you say you're saved if you hate your brother? How can you hate be saved if you hate your sister. The Bible says that you're a liar. The Bible declares that if any man says he loves God whom he has not seen and hates his brother whom he has seen, the Bible says that man is a liar. 
and I don't repent for the word of God. And God is not a man that he should repent. He's not a liar. So we've got a long way to go, ladies and gentlemen, to, to, to walk in the love of Christ. We've got to make full proof of our discipleship. Uh, uh, even even if, if we don't say something uh, against someone because their skin is different or because they live in a different neighborhood or because they drive a, 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 a 20-year-old car, uh, hatred has many ways of manifesting itself. Just the way you look at certain people. Just the way you frown at certain people, uh, 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 the way you turn your back on them, the way you neglect them, the way you pick and choose whom you're going to going to help, the way you pick and choose how you're going to spend your tithes, the way you pick and choose, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I look at I look at the violence in Haiti, and 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 all the violence and all the the missionary efforts that have gone forth in Haiti, and 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 yet. When, when uh, uh, those poor people tried 20 years ago, to many of them tried to come to America on ships and on boats, the United States government, they didn't have to build a wall. They just refused to let those ships come in the shore. They turned those ships and those little boats back to sea and told those people, we don't want you here. But this is a land that's supposed to be the land of love, ladies and gentlemen, the love. And it... I don't get it much. Hey, this I don't get much into this talk about the wall, building a wall. You, can, you see, because I I sought God the other uh, last week on the wall. I said, Lord, what kind of wall do you want built in America? And the Lord said, uh, I would like to build a wall of the Holy Spirit around all Americans. I would like Americans to be saved. And if they get saved and really give their hearts to me, I will build a hedge around them. I'll build a wall. I, I don't need a concrete wall or a brick and mortar wall or a steel wall. I can build a wall of protection if my people, God said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, there be no need for a wall. That's what the Lord gave me. So I just praise God. I thank God. I just thank God. My message today is give full proof of your discipleship or make full proof of your discipleship. And uh, Scripture says in 1 John chapter 4, if a man says he loves God whom he has not seen and hates his brother whom he has seen, he is a liar. The Bible calls you a liar. I'm not calling you a liar. The Bible calls you a liar. But you know how people are. They hear this kind of preaching, and so they hate the preacher. They throw rocks at the preacher for preaching what God says. People are afraid to throw rocks at God. They're afraid to throw rocks at God. People don't want to know the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And so America has to deal with this racism thing. A lot of people are going to be embarrassed. Uh, uh, hey, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people are going to be embarrassed when we stand, when we go to the great white throne judgment, and we have to give an account for what we did in this life. And a lot of people, I'm talking about well-known people, famous people, popular people, people who commanded crowds to follow them, they're going to be eternally embarrassed when the Lord says, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. You hated blacks. You hated Hispanics. You hated Asians. You hated Muslims. You hated Sikhs. You hated Hindus. You hated poor. You hated anyone who was not like you. God's going to say to people, and God's going to say this to a lot of so-called Christians, ladies and gentlemen, so-called Christians, depart from me. I never knew you. And so if, if you say you're saved, then Build your life on the firm foundation of the word of God. Jesus said there were two men who built houses. One man built his house on sand. The other man built his house on rock. And the winds blew on both of those houses. The storms came. The winds came. The tsunamis, the cyclones, the earthquakes. And the man's house that was built on sand crumbled. It was washed away. It could not stand. But then the man who built his house on the solid rock, 
the winds blew against it, the storms came, the tsunamis came, the earthquakes came, and the tornadoes came, and that house stood. And I want to ask you, what foundation is your house built on? I'm asking you, church, check your foundation. Check your foundation. Are there cracks in your foundation? Is your foundation built on the solid rock of Jesus Christ? And, and a lot of you are going to say, I'm saved. For those of you who are listening to this recording, oh, I'm saved. Pastor Carter, I'm saved. Then are you bringing forth fruits fit for the kingdom? It's easy to say I'm saved. Anybody can say I'm saved. But is your life built on the word of God? Do you have a teachable spirit? Can God teach you something? Can God teach you something? Uh, I, I, I'm learning, uh, even as the dean of the Paul Bakley School of Prophecy and the dean of the Back to Basics School of Ministry, and we've been ministering to people, teaching people all over the world. There are a lot of people who want to be taught, and then there's a large number of people, you can't tell them anything. I mean, I've written textbooks, I've written books, and done research on that. But there are people, uh, 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 they will challenge that. I mean, I mean, people who haven't written, do this. I can't even write a love letter. I uh, can't even write a, a note to the children to uh, 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 turn the lights on when you get, get home. But they are so critical of people who have studied the Word of God and are filled with the Holy Ghost and are teachers. But there are people who cannot be taught. They don't want to be taught. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to prevent disaster. This ministry is trying to prevent disaster. The Holy Ghost is trying to prevent disaster. Jesus does not want to have to say to you, depart from me. I never knew you. I know this is good preaching. I know it's tight, but it's right. But I'm preaching to myself, too. I'm preaching to myself, too. How can I say I love God and hate my neighbor? How can I say I love God and pick and choose whom I'm going to help? Ladies and gentlemen, if someone comes to you in distress and their, their skin is a different color, are you going to help them or are you going to deny them? Are you going to be like that uh, 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 churchy man in, in, in the parable? Uh, he saw this man beaten and laying in the ditch, and he was on his way to church. The bishop, he was on his way to church. He bypassed that man who was beat up and in the ditch, and then here comes a choir director singing his songs as he's marching along, going to church. And he looked at this guy in the ditch, and he walked right around him. And then here comes this Samaritan, this man who was hated and despised by the church. He came, and he picked up that man put him in his vehicle and took him to the hospital and, and commanded that the, the doctors take good care of him. Whatever he needs, give it to him. And if, if uh, uh, this is not enough money, charge it to my account. Jesus said, now which one of these was his neighbor? Which one of these was his neighbor? I wonder how many neighbors have you passed by? I wonder how many neighbors have I passed by? I wonder how many times have we had opportunities to be the Jesus that this world can see and we let that opportunity get by because of racism, because of uh, 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 prejudice in our hearts, because of uh, what we've been taught in our church or what our denomination teaches. Ladies and gentlemen, God gives us opportunities every day to be the Jesus that this world needs to be seen. The Bible says, greater is he in us than he that's in the world. The Holy Ghost lives in us. God prompts us to help or not to help. God will give you wisdom. No, you can't help that person because if you stop your car right now, there are people hiding in the bushes, and they're going to hijack your car, take your money, your credit card, and leave you beaten in the street. You've got to use wisdom who to help. But if your heart is hard against somebody, I ain't going to help her because she's black. I ain't going to help her because she's white. I ain't going to help her because she's from Kentucky. I ain't going to help her because she knows Dustina in Tennessee. Then that's hardness of heart. And people like that, even though they, they may be singing the choir, they may be the diva. They may take the lead song. They may uh, be the one preaching the word. They may be the worship leader. They may be leading the praise team. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this kind of religion stinks. It stinks. It stinks to high heaven. And it stinks in God's nostrils. God is looking for people who are pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When you say I'm saved, then there ought to be some proof of your discipleship. In other words, discipleship starts with the moment you get saved, then you are ready to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. The moment you say I'm saved, then you ought to be preparing for Bible study, learning how to worship, how to praise God, how to walk in love, how to be a servant to mankind, how to serve the Lord. The moment you say I'm saved, you're saying I'm not going to live the way I used to in the world. The world's no longer going to dictate to me or, or, or uh, influence me. Satan no longer owns me. And so if Satan no longer owns you, then are you making preparation to learn about this God who loves you so much he gave his only begotten son? Are you going to study about him from Genesis to Revelation? And here's the kicker. If you say you're saved... Are you going to be willing to submit yourself to an anointed Holy Ghost-filled teacher, someone who can train you because you really don't know? And a lot of people need to stop pretending. You don't know. We're all ignorant. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God has a teacher for you, and he's got a teacher for me. The problem is we've got millions of people who claim they're saved, but there's no fruit in their life. They claim they have a relationship with Jesus. But the Bible says, you shall know them by their fruits. The Bible says, we shall know their Christians by their love. And if there's no love, ladies and gentlemen, I look at Washington, D.C. I hear all this rhetoric, all this mean stuff, this cutting. It's cutting to the quick. It's denouncing one another. It's partisanship. It's cutting. And there's no love in it. And yet people worship the president. They worship their congressman. And, and, and Christians are worshiping people who have no love in their hearts. The Bible says obey those who have authority. We are to obey them, but we're not to worship them. And I, I pray... Open, your, open our eyes, Lord God. Open our eyes, Lord God, that we may walk in holiness and in righteousness, that we will love our neighbor as we love ourselves, that we will be obedient to you. And so, make full proof of your discipleship. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 15 to 19, Who do you say that I am? And Peter said, You are the Christ the son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, Simon, but my Father which is in heaven has revealed that to you. If you say you're a Christian, then you ought to give the Father the opportunity to minister to you and to teach you. In other words, you ought to put yourself in a place where you can learn of God. And, 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 and we've got this great school, this training school, and if this school is not for you, we can recommend other schools. We have, there are places where God has assigned people to teach you exactly what you need if you want to be taught. God said about the church, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin. I'll heal their land. This land is not going to be healed, ladies and gentlemen, until God's people, the church, humbles ourselves, and the church repents. The church has to take the lead in repenting in this nation. You and I have to take the lead. We've got to tell God, God, we missed you. We turned our hearts to you, against you. We blinked our eyes at that situation where you gave us an opportunity to minister in love. The church must repent. Judgment will begin at the church, ladies and gentlemen. Judgment must begin at the church. So you and I, we've got a long way to go. But we can begin today by no longer blinking our eyes at sin and no longer entertaining sin. 
we can begin today to make full proof of our discipleship. To be disciples of Christ means we are willing to be trained by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. That we are to submit them ourselves to those who have authority over us and to teach them. And that those who have authority ought to have enough love for God and enough fear of the Lord that they will not manipulate you or take advantage of you or lead you astray. And so, my friends, seek you, the Lord, while he may be found. Help your family to seek the Lord because the end is coming soon. The end times are upon us. The time is coming where people will not be able to stand. They're going to run to the rocks, and the rocks will cry out. No hiding place. They'll run to the mountains, and the mountains will fall on them. Ladies and gentlemen, we're near the end. Get saved and say saved. Don't just get saved by verbally. Uh, 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 don't get saved by shaking the hands of the preacher and getting a pack of offering envelopes. Don't get saved by joining the choir. Don't get saved by joining the usher board. You must be born again. In order to be saved, you must be born again. You and I must die. In order to be born again, we must die. The Bible says, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ lives in me, and the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. If you truly want to be saved, I'm not talking about making a confession, and I'll add you to my prayer list. No, 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 because anybody can make a confession. A lot of people make a confession to get that sickness off them or get that oppression off them or get that, uh, to try to get a job or try to get a promotion. A lot of people are making professions, and a lot of people are pimping God. They're making a pimp out of God. They're, they're pimping God. They're making a prostitute out of God. They're trying to use the Lord. But if you truly, truly, truly want to be saved and be born again, then humble yourself. Call on the name of the Lord. Ask the Lord to kill your spirit. You must die. You must die, ladies and gentlemen. You must die to self. When you're born again, you cease to be selfish. It's no longer you, 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 or I, I, I. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When you're truly born again, you don't hate on your neighbor. You don't hate on a person because their skin is different, of a different color. You don't hate on a person because their language is different. You don't hate on a person because they practice a different religion. When you're truly born again, you love people with the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus hung on the cross, ladies and gentlemen. They stretched him wide and hung him high. They nailed him to the cross. And he died to take away our sins and remove our iniquities. He died for you and me and for everyone. And he said in his word in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, he said, Go ye into all the world, teaching all nations, making disciples out of all of them, teaching them whatsoever I have given to you. He said, all the world. Don't just go where the whites are. Don't just go where the browns are. Don't just go where the blacks are, but go where people are all over the world and share with them. The gospel that God loves them so much, he gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice so that they can have eternal life and then show them how to get into the kingdom of God and then teach them how to stand, teach them how to build a solid foundation. I pray that you will build your house, meaning your life, on a firm foundation if Jesus Christ is not your foundation, then you need to get truly born again. And you can be born again if you ask God. Believe in faith. Believe in faith. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And that confession and that belief means that you are making a quality decision. You're going to follow Jesus and follow his teachings for the rest of your life. You're going to follow it. You're going to follow it. 
if your neighbors join the Ku Klux Klan, you're not going to join the Klan. If your neighbors join the black nationalists and, 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 and declare war against white cops, you're not going to follow them. Why? Because I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. This is Pastor Carter. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. I pray that the gospel will penetrate your heart. I pray that the Holy Ghost will fill you. I pray that he'll heal your body. I pray that he'll deliver you. I pray that he'll surround you with his love. I pray that he'll magnify himself in your family, in your community, in your church, in your nation, wherever you are. And I pray that the gospel will help you to bring forth fruit fit for the kingdom. I pray that you will make full proof of your discipleship that you'll be willing to be disciplined by the Holy Spirit, that you'll be willing to be disciplined by studying the Word of God, that you'll take time out daily to study the Word of God, that you'll be willing to be disciplined to learn how to pray, that you'll be willing to be disciplined by receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost and surrendering the Lordship of your life to the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what it means when we say, I'm saved. Jesus is Lord. This is Pastor Carter. I thank God for this message. This is an awesome message. Tell somebody about it. Visit YouTube for this message and messages like this that will help you. And we give the glory and the honor to God. If you want to be saved today, if you truly want to be saved, if, if, if Jesus comes tonight, will you go to heaven? I want to ask you that. If Jesus comes tonight, will you go to heaven? Will you spend eternity with him? If your answer is, I'm not sure, I don't know, or I hope so, then you ought to get saved right now. Well, what do you mean, Pastor Carter, ought to get saved? That means you ought to stop what you're doing right now and ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. Be serious about it. Ask him to kill you. Kill your spirit, kill yourself, and ask him to give you the new birth. You've got to die. You've got to die to yourself. You've got to die to those old ways. Tell the Lord you're willing to be born again. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the new birth, and he will do that. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Praise God. Praise God. I know I've been signing off for the last five minutes, but I'm going to sign off. Hallelujah. Uh, those of you who are online with me live, stay on and, and ask your questions. I'll share your comments. I'll be glad to listen to you and, and answer any questions I can. And those of you listening to the, the uh, recording, God bless you. Play it again and again. Encourage people to listen to the recording. Encourage people to be saved. Let them know that the end is coming soon, but there is hope. Ask them, encourage them to have only positive expectations. Hope. Having only positive expectations. God bless you. Woo. Well, praise God. 